Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. I'm your tutor, Disha. Today we're going to be talking about cell division, specifically mitosis versus meiosis. But I wonder why it's called cell division when all the cells do is multiply. Well, let's find out. In our tutorial today, we're going to be looking at an overview of mitosis, the major stages of mitosis, the importance of mitosis, examples of mitosis, and mitosis in asexual reproduction. We will then move to look at an overview of meiosis, the major stages of meiosis, the importance of meiosis, examples of meiosis, and meiosis in sexual reproduction. We will also compare and contrast the two processes. What is mitosis? Well, mitosis is a biological process in which a cell called the parent is divided into two genetically identical cells called the daughter. To facilitate this division, chromosomes within the parent cells are duplicated and distributed in each new cells. In this way, the parent cells passes on its genetic material to each of its daughter cells. The process of mitotic division is divided in the following phases, interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Let's look at interphase. Now, interphase is the phase in which the cell spends most of its life cycle. Now, during interphase, no division takes place. However, the cells go through a period of growth and prepares itself for division. There are three parts to the process of interphase. We have the G1 or GAP1 phase, where the cell undergo growth and protein synthesis. We have the S or synthesis phase, where the cell synthesizes its DNA and the chromosome number is doubled. We have the G2 or GAP2 phase, where the cell resumes its growth in preparation for division. After preparing itself for cell division, the cell then enter prophase. And during prophase, the nuclear membrane breaks down and the nucleolus disappears. Proteins associated with the DNA are activated. This allows the DNA to wind around them and bundles in dense shape. Following this is chromosome condensation. The centrioles in the centromere are separated and move to opposite poles of the cell. This results in the formation of a mitotic spindle. During the process of metaphase, the mitotic cell's chromosomes, which have been condensed from prophase, align themselves in the middle of the cell. This happens because protein formation called canadocores, microtubules, pull the sister chromatids back and forth until they align along the equator of the cell. So each pair of chromosome is connected at the centromere where the spindle fiber is attached. Following alignment, the cell enters anaphase. And during anaphase, in mitotic cell division, the centromere split in two and the sister chromatids, now called chromosomes, are pulled towards opposite poles by spindles. So half the chromosomes move to one pole and the other half to the opposite pole. In addition, because of the pulling by the spindle, the cell membrane would appear like a slight pinch in the middle. Telophase is the final stage of mitosis before cytokinesis. Essentially, in this phase, the sister chromatids reach opposite poles as seen in anaphase and starts to lengthen. Spindle fibers which have been effective in segregation, dissolves, and the nuclear envelope reform by associating with the chromosomes. 
two nuclei are created in the one cell. So as the nuclear envelope reform, the chromosomes begin to decondense and become more diffuse. Following telophase is cytokinesis, where the cytoplasm of the parent cell divide into two daughter cells, marking the end of mitotic cell division. Mitosis is very important in living organisms. It promotes genetic stability. It promotes growth. It promotes replacement and regeneration of new cells. And it also is important in asexual reproduction. Here are some examples of mitosis in plants. So we can see we have mitosis here in the root tip showing its various phases. Mitosis can also be seen in budding, in fragmentation, in binary fission. Now, meiosis is defined as a biological process that gives rise to four gametes or sex cells, each possessing half the number of chromosomes of the original cell. Meiosis is primarily seen in organisms where there is a production of gametes, such as sperm or egg cell. Meiosis is carried out in two rounds of divisions, called meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Now let us look at interphase. Now interphase is the phase in which the cell spends most of its life cycle. Now during interphase, no division takes place. However, the cells go through a period of growth and prepares itself for division. There are three parts to the process of interphase. We have the G1 or GAP1 phase where the cell undergo growth and protein synthesis. We have the S or synthesis phase where the cell synthesizes its DNA and the chromosome number is doubled. We have the G2 or GAP2 phase where the cell resumes its growth in preparation for division. After interphase, the cell moves to prophase 1. In this process, the chromosomes condense, becoming thicker and shorter and appear like four chromosomes under a light microscope. The chromosomes also begin to pair up, aligning to its homologue partner. This aligning is called synapsis. During synapsis, homologues wrap around one another and swap segments of DNA through a process called crossing over. In addition, in prophase 1, the nuclear envelope, the structure that surrounds the nucleus, breaks up and dissolves. The nucleolus, the smaller organelle within the nucleus, dissolves as well. After prophase 1, metaphase 1 begins. During metaphase 1, the four homologues move to a plane called the metaphase plane, halfway between the two poles of the cell. Next, the spindle fibers attach to the centromeres of each chromosome. Both kinetochores of each sister chromatids pair and turn towards the same pole. As a result, both kinetochores attach to the spindle fibers from the same pole. Following metaphase 1 is anaphase 1, where the homologues chromosome pair are pulled apart and proceed to move to the ends of the cell. This is facilitated by the microtubules drawing the spindle apparatus. Notice in mitosis there were chromatids being pulled apart. However, in meiosis, at this stage, the chromatids remain together as one complete replicated chromosome. During telophase 1 of meiosis, there is a presence of complete haploid sets of chromosome at each pole. A cleavage furrow appears, and by the end of this stage, the parent cell has divided into two daughter cells. Because of crossing over in prophase 1, each daughter cell contains only one chromosome of the homologous pair. In the second phase of meiosis, we begin with prophase 2. In prophase 2, the following steps occur. The condensing of chromatids into chromosomes disintegration of the nuclear envelope, migration of centrosomes to either pole, and the reconstruction of the spindle apparatus. The cell then proceeds to metaphase 2, 
and during metaphase 2 of meiosis, the two sister chromatids of each chromosome are pulled to opposite poles by microtubules. Hence, the chromosomes will line up individually along the metaphase plate. This occurs in both daughter cells produced from meiosis 1. Now in anaphase 2, the sister chromatids of each chromosome separate and move towards opposite pole of the cell. Once they are no longer connected, the former chromatids are now called unreplicated chromosomes. As the chromosomes are dragged along by the spindle apparatus, thus giving them that V shape. Now telophase concludes meiosis. There is a formation of a nuclear membrane around each set of chromosomes. Cytokinesis then occurs where the two cells produced by meiosis 1 divide to form four haploid daughter cells. Then meiosis is then complete. Meiosis is very important in living organism. It fosters genetic variation. Because each gamete, either sperm or egg, contains a mixture of genes from two different parent chromosomes in sexual reproduction. Meiosis results in an offspring which has the genetic material of two different individuals. Meiosis also fosters a new combination of genetic information made in the gametes. And lastly, meiosis allows individuals to make physically and genetically unique offspring. Here are some examples of meiosis. We can see meiosis stages under a light microscope and also we can see the meiosis chart here where sperm cells are made, egg cells are made and also spores in fungi can be made from meiosis. Now going through the steps in this tutorial, we could see that mitosis and meiosis had some similarities. Now, both mitosis and meiosis start with a diploid parent cell that splits into daughter cells. Both mitosis and meiosis involves the breakdown of nuclear membrane. Both mitosis and meiosis uses spindle fiber to move chromosomes around. Both mitosis and meiosis are multi-stage processes. The stages are interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. And lastly, both mitosis and meiosis has the interphase step where the cell grows and DNA replication occurs. We could also observe some differences between mitosis and meiosis in this tutorial. Firstly, mitosis gives rise to two identical cells, also identical to parents, and meiosis produces four cells that are not identical and also not identical to parent cells. Mitosis occurs in all organisms. Meiosis primarily occurs in reproductive cells of human, animals, plants, and fungi. Mitosis is primarily asexual while meiosis is sexual. Now, in mitosis, no crossing over occurs. While in meiosis, crossing over occurs, which makes gametes. In mitosis, there is one pathway of cell division, while in meiosis, we could see that there were two phases, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Well, thanks for watching guys. Remember to study hard for your examinations and like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Bye.